Hello and welcome to uh, another live stream of uh, my 3D modeling. Uh, obviously most people know me as RJB slash Malachor and it's definitely a pleasure to let you people join in and watch my projects. Hello there. So obviously uh, the center portion of the ship is done from previous streams. Um, if anybody wants me to do sort of a walkthrough of what we did previously and sort of the mechanics behind it, let me know. And we're working on the gunship pod. Uh, basically the concept behind the ship is it's modular, different pods increase its uh, capacities in different ways. Gunship pod adds additional power, firepower. Uh, assault pod would be for planetary assaults that would add extra troop uh, capacity and landing ships for you know assaulting you know fortified locations and even things like science pods and so forth Just sort of a better view of the sort of finished ship like it's untextured at this point it's just sort of a, a basic color setup so at some point, maybe next week, I might actually texture this up and actually utilize the uh, ship dock that I built and do a few renders of that. And then sort of our progress. This is one of the older ones, so this is where we're currently at. So it sort of so it's that tongue tied already. Sort of shows the mechanics behind how it attaches to the ship and basically how it adds to the design. So if you look at it before the basic core ship and then with the pods attached and obviously the mechanicals behind attaching it and so forth. Sort of having a look here and deciding where to start from before. Last time we sort of worked on this area and for the most part finished it off. a little bit more pop to them. Special, just a little bit more raising just so they stand out just a touch bit more. pronounced and if you have any questions by all means ask I'm working on the uh, concept of trying to be a little bit more vocal while I work so definitely don't be afraid to inquiry on different things oh yes my apologies there. I always joke that I was born blonde, but I got better. But basically uh, what we did uh, last time was worked on this area, sort of filled it in with detail, and what I've sort of started almost sinking into the model, like disappearing into the detail around it. So I wanted it to become a little bit more pronounced. As you can sort of see here, like you can sort of see it, but it doesn't really pop the way I want it to pop. And again, sort of the mechanical view of how everything connects together and where the whole model is at this point. Okay, now we're going to sort of look around and decide where we want to play today. I think we have uh, an idea where all the uh, turrets, at least the smaller turrets, are going to go. So I might start with building uh, 
sort of like their uh, the hall mounting locations where they'll be attached because right now they're just sort of fitting in a, a basic room. work them into the actual design of the model. For some of the people that I've sort of chatted with for quite a while, I'm probably going to set up a specialized VIP panel and allow a, you know, a select group of people to sort of join in and chat along as I will discuss modeling, we can discuss sci-fi, we can discuss Stargate, just sort of make it a, a fun chit-chat casual environment. spots that you can start from that it all becomes overwhelming in some ways. for a recessed area for those ones. in between working on this model because obviously there's going to be more uh, modules that will be done as I sort of progress on it. Like a, a tactical transport. In the past video, if you did have a chance to see it, there's sort of an area that I'm thinking of turning into where the weapons will be. And I'm sort of stuck whether I want to do some. I guess. Or just to have it with something like missiles and drones. So 
still haven't fully decided the best way to go that with that. Like I don't want it to be super gun heavy, but I do want it to have sort of something.
of the ship itself. Just give me a second here. be about 313 meters long, 110 tall and 96 wide without the weapon pods. And basically on the core ship itself it would have four Asgard based beam weapons but because of the size of the ship and size of the reactor they'd probably be half the power of something like the Daedalus. Um, sort of visualize things is um, when I do uh, my models I try to work with sort of gives you a, an idea of perspective of how large the ship actually is well the beam weapons are still fairly large but purpose too. It's like a battleship may have bigger guns than you know a cruiser. Like you know the beam cannons, the actual emitters themselves are about three and a half meters tall, which is the situation is actually quite a a large object. And even in uh, the rail guns. And the turrets themselves are about two meters tall. Huge, but not super small either. And in the case of ships like this, as we have the advantage of Asgard technology, so I'd imagine a certain level of miniaturization has taken place. Oh, sorry for that. So, like, as I was saying, the uh, railgun turrets themselves are about two and a half meters wide and about two and a half meters tall, and the rail themselves is almost two meters long. So for a defensive weapon, I don't think that's overly, you know, out of the bounds of reality. And also as I was mentioning before is with the access to Asgard technology I imagine there's a certain level of miniaturization that has taken place too so what we might build would be maybe normally a little bigger but with the use of alien technology there's a certain level of miniaturization that we can get away with but again that's sort of my personal headcanon But for me, every time I start a model, like once I have the basic shape in place, I sort of visualize it based on sizes of windows. Like once you have an idea of a size of a window, then everything sort of grows from there and you can sort of keep a level of consistency. Yeah, so mine are probably about a little about half of that. And again, it's also visual appeal too. You know, everything sort of balances, like detail has to sort of balance off of each other as well. Like you, if you have things that are too big then it affects things that are too small and then it sort of throws off that balance of sort of uh, the design I guess in a certain way. And again this is quite a small ship so 
again, its weapon systems aren't designed to be on the same league as, you know, something like the Daedalus, which would be more of your battle cruiser, versus, you know, something that's more of a, a escort destroyer. You know, they all have the roles, but they don't necessarily. Well, it's actually odd that it's something that I think about quite often because like a lot of people have told me that when they look at designs that I do they're very representative of I guess the functionality so I tend to think of a lot of what would a ship have what functions would things have and that's why you see like a lot of you know vents and mechanical elements because I think that gives a certain level of of realism because you know, it makes the ship feel like it actually has things that do some sort of function. You may not understand the function, but, you know, there's a function happening. Kind of grounds it more in reality, I guess, for people. That's still interesting things to think about and definitely something that would be fun to, uh, you know, in a more casual chat to sort of, you know, actually sit down and discuss the, the mechanics of different things in the Stargate universe. Like, it'd be interesting to even discuss how, you know, each person sort of visualizes how, you know, the Asgard plasma beam weapons actually work and sort of compare some ideas on functionality. I'm pretty sure I've seen uh, his work in the past. And even myself, like I've played with a bunch of different sort of concepts. I've done, you know, the Asgard beam weapons as turrets. I've done them just every kind of possible way imaginable. Just because the show, I think, really leaves it ambiguous on exactly what they are on the ship. Like you see some sort of like mount or turret, I believe. fully clear and in this in the case of this ship uh, I sort of had them as sort of fixed placed mounts just because I think it uh, fits the design better like they're still able to 
you know, fire off at angles, but they're more directional. But I think that sort of fits in more with its uh, tactical nature as like an escort destroyer where it sort of flies in, guns a-blazing and, you know, hits hard and sort of runs off and lets the bigger ships continue pounding away. Just a lot of quick hit and run attacks. And that is the thing I like about Stargate. There's so many possibilities and so many ways that as a fan we can sort of expand on things and explore things. You know, there's, there's, it's sort of like Rhesus. There's no wrong way to eat a Rhesus. Of course, talking about Rhesus, now I want a Rhesus. are ones that are you know sort of tied into something or you know sort of make you hungry I guess you know nothing wrong I think one of my uh, biggest challenges right now is my old mouse that I've had for probably uh, close to 10 years, it finally kicked the bucket and you've been so 
you know, you become so used to how things move and click and and now that I've switched to something new it's a lot more sensitive and it's always feels like I'm trying to overshoot what I'm doing. A new mouse, calm down, calm down. Yeah, this one's adjustable too. I just haven't quite found that uh, the sweet spot that I, I sort of like. And when I finally get uh, the Abydos and the uh, Mara done, for a long, long time I've been sort of thinking of the concept of doing a, a dedicated uh, science vessel. Uh, sort of a, a nifty idea where you have a ship and sort of a has sort of a latching system and it has a little shuttlecraft that connects in on the underside uh, sort of like um, on Star Trek where you have like the captain's yacht that's sort of attached to the underside of the saucer section but looks like part of the ship yeah exactly Well, it just means that you have to be a really good pilot. But again, with like a system like that, I imagine that a lot of it's built around like an auto dock. Well, 
uh, what you call it, a dramatic uh, plot point of whatever story that would be involved. Of course, then I'll also have to sort of come up with a, an idea for a, a science ship name. And, you know, obviously the, you know, most people would be, you know, the Carter or even some like the Daniel, you know, Daniel Jackson, but I am kind of tempted to go with the McKay. Pride of the fleet, a little bit arrogant. You know, that kind of ship. And McKay only blew up three quarters of a solar system, so if you're going to name it out name it after somebody that has done a little less uh, destruction. Carter is, her character, even though she's very science oriented, over the course of the show she also sort of evolved more to be uh, sort of that military commander feeling takes away from the civilian science side of things and when you have somebody like if I remember correctly you know civilian based it sort of adds that connection of you know Stargate's not all about military it's not all about fighting and battling aliens So I'll sort of have plans for sort of like an unmanned exploration ship where they're, you know, almost shuttle size, maybe a little bigger. And the idea is as Earth sort of expands its sphere of influence, it would send out fleets of these ships to the neighboring solar systems and even ones that are off the gate network or not even part of the gate network and actually start to explore and, you know, find out what actually is going on around our own solar system because all we have ever glimpsed is really what's part of the gate network and there's a whole galaxy of who knows what going on and for me those would be you know something that would be actually a good Daniel class or Daniel you know class starship you know it's all about exploration archaeology they'd go ahead they'd sort of scan the system relay information back and then if there's something interesting a flying ship would be dispatched or a ship for first contact would be dispatched much to explore so much you know that you know it feels like you've only seen the tip of the iceberg of what the show could be
And always the most important thing, save often. Definitely nothing more disappointing than uh, being an hour into your work. And then hours of tears after. of any critical part where you know I do something complex I just try to save because even if it doesn't auto save it's definitely not a lot of fun to go back and try to fix and I've done it before where I've you know gone to do something and it mucks something up and I didn't notice and you know, I carried on and I'm like uh oh now I have to try to go back and fix it. But I guess that's sort of the sign of being an artist. You know, if you haven't gone and worked for an hour and that you worked on. You know, I guess you can't really call yourself an artist. Because nobody's perfect. And if you didn't see uh, the work on the Tempest, I am also um, uploading those uh, videos to uh, YouTube and I'll post them later for people that want to watch them later. So the updates for that. Posted your updates for your Okay, well I'll try to check it out when I'm done doing my streaming.
Well, hopefully you're not having issues with uh, members on those sites. I know some people can uh, definitely become a little intense at times. And criticism is not always the easiest thing to take, especially when people accomplish and, and do. Okay, well, I'll read it when I'm done. And like you say, life goes on. Well, the most important thing is you enjoy what you're doing and And uh, one of the other things I'm thinking for the future too is yeah, times when I'm maybe not necessarily working on models, I might do some casual streams where, you know, as I said, sort of
background so that there's something for people to see and you know take an opportunity to sort of chat while I sort of relax and de-stress myself. And you know a whole kind of good COVID thing you know with all the social distancing you definitely don't get the same level of interaction with people and it, I think it'd be you know one good for myself and good for others just to chat without getting the really purpose behind it and a good way to sort of get to know people in the community. give feedback to if it's something that don't, you know seem to feel that it you know works for them you know that's all fine and then we'll just try different things and you know for myself stargate art for a long long time and you know the thing that really keeps me going is the whole concept of community be it fans of the show fans of my art or even fellow artists that I've known and met over the years. Yeah, and I might try to do something different in that uh, context in the future too. Sort of uh, that learn. So it might be something that uh, to do with uh, maybe setting up a separate uh, standing microphone might be. A Definitely filled in quite a bit since we started today. take a look at her in sort of the full context. It has come quite a ways, like these areas have sort of sunk in here. I want to be sort of very mechanical, sort of like uh, the areas up in here where they're sunk in, like a lot of moving parts, a lot of mechanical parts, a lot of functionality to them. And then I also want to add uh, some windows into these gray sections there. And this way to 
keep track of what you're working on and then you sort of know what's what and it distinguishes things and you don't get as lost in the model when it's just all one color. I'm definitely liking how the uh, the weapon pods coming along and it really it really makes the ship feel fully finished like the core ship you know I think is a pretty solid design for what it's meant to do but the weapon pod definitely adds a lot to the design well that's something I try to push for is you know just because it's Stargate doesn't mean that you know you have to follow every design philosophy exactly the same like you want to have a certain lineage you want to connect it to you know the ships from the show you want to have something from the Prometheus you want something from the Daedalus and you know just to give that connect sort of feel that it is part of the show but that doesn't mean that you can't you know go beyond and expand on it and sort of you know add some fresh ideas you know, like I'm not going as far as, you know, the new Star Trek where future ships are these disconnected floating blocks of uh, sort of blandness, but that, that for me went a little too far, but at least, you know, with things like this you can feel the connection of the past. And again, for sort of other people that might be viewing, you know, just sort of a quick view of sort of where we started from today. So this is the actual rendered model. So, you know, we've, we've come quite a ways and today's, you know, for an hour, you know, a lot has got done. And we got our turret sort of finally situated and that sort of gives me a framework to work detail around it. and. We've sort of started to do some of the, the broad brush strokes and build some of the larger detailed areas on the top and bottom surface. And from there it's just sort of filling in and, you know, going with what feels right and sort of fill her in from there. And the other thing I'm going to go over too is again, for people that have subscribed to my Patreon, I have added a fourth tier to it, which does cover printable models. Um, the one thing I'd like to say is that these ones are all originally designed for 3D rendering and they're basically just straight ports from those. So there might be <clears throat> some tinkering that a person might have to do to make them fully functional for a 3D printer. Like I've only just started to do printing myself. I picked up a Ender 5, uh, uh, what would it be, Ender 5 Pro, or sorry, Plus last week so I've just been setting it up and figuring out how to calibrate it and that kind of stuff. Uh, which are you sort of talking about? Are you talking like the lower corner? Because at the top we have the uh, Tempest. Um, Excalibur, Daedalus, and this is sort of my take on um, basically you know you have the ancients at war with the wraith and um, you know desperate times they've taken basically jumpers and you know expanded the design to make them sort of cargo capable and even though they're not capable of traveling through the gate they're still able to cloak and travel via hyper hyperdrive so they're make you know nice little quick transport ships that can hide um, bottom um, these are models I made years back when I was doing like a lot of I was very inspired by ancient architecture so hangar that it was originally designed for some larger ships not quite as big as something like the um, Aurora class but it'd be again something similar to what I'm building now and so it'd be sort of like a an ancient destroyer so it would be like a hangar bay for that and this was I was working on a animation project years back too and uh, 
basically I built what would be a, a jumper spaceport. So it'd be on a planet and this would be sort of your central hub of space travel coming in and out of the planet. So it'd be like our equivalent of an airport, but for you know jumpers and small kind of ships. And then the last one here, this was um, basically I was building like a colony and this was kind of like a, um, an, a the command building of the outpost. So it actually had the Stargate on it and then it had the you know basic infrastructure the administrative built around it. And sort of continue on from there. Again, I've also included some of my Babylon 5 models that I've done. So I've done a, a crew shuttle. And this one would be sort of, um, well, it's a heavy Corvette. So it'd be based on the, uh, the Warlock design of the Earth Alliance. So it would have artificial gravity, better armor plating, and it'd be basically like your escort ship for heavier destroyers. And then sort of a patrol ship, so it'd be, you know, hanging around colonies and that and ensuring that raiders don't, you know, attack the colonies. And again, you know, my version of uh, the Raider Battle Wagon. So in the show, there's been two different versions of it, and I've took elements that I sort of liked from both tossed them together and expanded on the design, added a rotating section for artificial gravity. And then we also have a Raider fighter that I've built. And then a cargo transport. And this was my uh, first attempt at 3D printing. So Mr. Pikachu, he was doing pretty good and I've been trying to figure out the best way to hear the models to the belt plate and the the one that I was trying the plate cools after a while and I didn't realize that it sort of turns back to powder and as he was printing and the adhesion sort of let go and he sort of got dragged along and he got decapitated in the process. So for those that might like uh, you know Pokemon Go, you might want to close your eyes because it's a pretty horrific sight. And I'm basically looking at uh, probably next week, I'm probably going to do a series of six more models that I'm going to add to that tier for 3D printing. Uh, it's basically the highest tier on my Patreon page. It runs a person, you know, $15 a month. You know, there's no obligation to go beyond the month, but, you know, it basically gives you access to whatever I upload under that category. So I think it's a pretty good deal if people want to, you know, if you want to look at the models, you know, it's a good opportunity. If you want to try to, you know, work out how to print them, you know, all the power to you. And just for people that want to even support my artwork, there's multiple tiers. The lowest tier is $3 a month. The extra money goes towards buying extra software that, you know, obviously my goal is to, you know, always improve my artwork and, you know, sort of push my boundaries a little further and, you know, every little bit, hard, you know, helps, especially with the tougher economy right now, too. And that's sort of, you know, I think where we're going to call it today. Uh You know, relax for the evening because, you know, the wife still likes to see me occasionally. And, you know, don't be strangers. If you have comments and want to, you know, make suggestions, feel free to do that. Um, you know, you can do it via my Facebook page, Devon and Art page. Obviously, I've just started up a Discord uh, channel and, you know, I obviously enjoy hearing from people there. I've had uh, pretty good conversations today. So definitely don't be a stranger, and if all works out good and I have time tomorrow, I'm going to carry on more on the Abydos, and until then, I'm going to call it a day, and thank you all very much.